I've been experimenting with homemade vertical antennas and I've got one that I really am excited about and I want to share the idea with you. I've been, uh, ever since I got into <clears throat> portable operations, Summit's on the Air, um, and it's QRP, I've been looking for what, I've been looking for the Holy Grail. What is the Holy Grail? Well, it's a portable antenna that is multi-band, that is self-resonant, especially if you don't have an antenna tuner. And wait, there's more. It's easily deployable and it's easily maintainable. <coughs> you take a dipole, for, ex for instance. It's, it's lightweight, easy to make, works very well. But you got to take that thing out into briary woods and get the center up high and then go out 40, 50, 60 feet in each direction through the briars and the rhododendrons and get those ends up high. And then if you want it to be multi-band, you got to bring those wires down and, and reset the links. And uh, that, that does not um, comply with the easily deployable and easily maintainable principle that I desire to have. So I looked into uh, homemade buddy sticks. Now that's a wonderful invention, but the thing that I don't like about the buddy stick is the stick. You got to carry those stick pieces, you got to assemble them, you got to disassemble them. And you know what? There's trees out there. God put all these wonderful trees on mountaintops so that we can string antennas up in them. So the design I've come up with is a 15 foot long vertical wire antenna with a, a tapped coil, an induction coil that I can show you how to build and I call it the no stick buddy stick. And so I want to show you next the drawing, the design, I guess you call it a schematic design of this antenna. The total length is 15 feet. The upper wire is 12 feet, the lower wire is 3 feet. There are four parts to it. The upper wire, the coil, the lower wire, and a radial system, which I'll talk about in a minute. The upper wire is 15 feet, and it's continuous with the coils on, on the, uh, with the turns around the induction coil. The induction coil is wrapped around a, a piece of PVC pipe, which is six inches by one and a quarter inches wide, six inches long. The lower wire is not connected to the induction coil. It is three feet of wire that comes through a little hole in the bottom of the uh, PVC pipe and terminates in an alligator clip, which then will tap several tap points that you put on the coil. The radial system uh, is connected with a connector, which I'll show you what connector I use in a minute. And I use, I use this antenna for three bands, um, 40 meters, uh, 30 meters, and 20 meters, which are my favorite summits on the mountain, summits on the air bands. And so I have three ground radials, or actually they're elevated radials, uh, for each of those bands, 33 feet, 23 feet, and 16 feet. And next, I'm going to tell you how to uh, assemble the induction coil. What an induction coil does is it makes the antenna think that it's longer than it is. So, for example, on 40 meters, a quarter wave vertical antenna would be 33 feet long. And with the induction coil, you can make it 15 feet long. And so you don't have to get it so high up in the uh, high up in the air, and it becomes more useful and more versatile to you. Here is the coil that I've made, and I want to describe to you. First, please ignore the orange wire winder. I'll tell you why I do that in a minute, but just pretend like it's not there. Here is the upper wire that is continuous with the coil. Um, here is the. Uh, PVC pipe, which is six inches long and a quarter, one and a quarter inches wide. Um, this is 18 gauge wire, uh, and there are 62 turns. Uh, there were about 57, but I added some more so that I could get uh, 60 meters in there. This is the 
um, lower wire, three feet long, that is not connected to, to anything on the coil. It just goes through a hole at the bottom of the coil so that it won't, so that you won't lose it. And it uh, terminates in the alligator clip, which hits the tap points. The different parts of the antenna here on the floor at the upper part of the picture is the coil, and of course above it is the upper wire. And then f coming down from the coil, you will see the lower three-foot wire, and it ends in a banana plug. And I've wrapped it in red tape because that's the positive. Then you'll see the double uh, co banana connector. Let me get closer. Um, which is which has the feed line, and I've coiled it. You can do that or not, just to create a little choke on the feed line. And uh, the antenna goes here, and the uh, radials go here. I'm filming one-handed now, so I can't plug them in. Now, the radials I described earlier are three lengths of wire. And when I um, deploy the antenna, I, I put out all the three radials. It works best that way, 16 feet, 23 feet, and 33 feet. These are elevated radials. What you want to do is get the bottom of the antenna about three feet off the ground and string your radials out uh, in, in three different directions, preferably evenly around the circle. and uh, um, and they should be three feet off the ground. So you can pull them out from the bottom of the antenna and put them and attach them to a shrub or something like that. Please notice while I'm thinking of it that I coil the radials separately. Uh, believe me, I tried coiling them together and you'll spend an hour in the woods untangling the knots. Coil them separately. And I like to put a little weight at the end of each one. There, there's just a washer. And so when you are, are stringing out the elevated radials in the field and you get to the end and there's a shrub there you can just throw that weight into the shrub and it uh, holds there nicely. That's very lightweight wire by the way that's probably 24 gauge wire or maybe 22 gauge wire something that's thin and lightweight but doesn't break if you look at it hard. This is the most challenging part, but it's the most fun part, and it's not so challenging that you can't do it. Um, what you must do first is deploy your antenna. Pull the upper wire about 20 feet up into a tree and let it hang straight down. That means that your coil is going to be about uh, seven feet off the ground, maybe six feet off the ground, and your bottom wire will be about three feet off the ground. And uh, so then you deploy your radials and uh, hook up your feed wire to an antenna analyzer. Now, I don't know how you're going to do this without an antenna analyzer. You're going to have to buy one or borrow one. Uh, but I tell you, I bought one on eBay for less than $200 a while back. It's, it's a wonderful device, and I don't know how you're going to build antennas without one. So let's say you want to find the tap point for, for uh, 7 megahertz. Now that's my tap point for 7 megahertz. Uh, but to find it, what I did was, you take a pin, this is a, a sewing machine needle, nice stout needle, and you stick it into the wire somewhere so that it makes electrical contact with the copper strands within the wire. And you hook your uh, alligator clip to it, and then you check it on the analyzer and see where it dips. And let's say that it dips at 6 megahertz. That means you've got too much wire in your induction coil for 7 megahertz. So you need to shorten it. And the way you do that is you go up a couple of rows and try it again. 
And you do that and you get closer and closer until you can find a point, uh, a turn, which is uh, very close to what you want. I wanted 7.03 megahertz because that's a good CW frequency. And so let's say you get to 7.05. You can then start going back and forth on that particular turn until you find the 7.03 point. And that's what that is right there. And I'll tell you, you can nail it that way. And so you do that for each of your of, of each of your tap points. Um, and so once you've done that, what you want to do is spread the wires a little bit and take a very small drill bit and drill a hole in the PVC pipe, not in the wire, but in the PVC pipe where your tap point will be. Then get an eye hook and this goes through the wire. Screw that through the wire so that it makes good contact with the copper strands within the wire and goes through the wire into the hole that you've drilled and then you screw that in and that makes it stout. And you do that for each one of your tap points. Let me say a word about why I have this wire winder on here. Um, the reason I put this on here is so that I could wrap this antenna up in one nice little bundle. I love these wire winders. I, got, I get this kind from Soda Beams. Soda Beams, they're in UK. They've got a lot of great uh, radio equipment, QRP, portable type radio equipment. And you'll see I just, uh, on each end, I drilled a hole and screwed it in to the, uh, to the PVC pipe. So this is the whole antenna with the feed line in one nifty little package. Lightweight, that thing couldn't weigh even a pound. And there, those are the ground radials. This, so, this soda beams coil ha is for my throw line. There's a weight on the end of it. And then I put the whole thing in that bag so there's the whole antenna right there in a plastic bag. I like to put stuff in plastic bags so I can see what's inside of them. And that works very nicely. I'm going to give you a couple of links to a couple of websites on uh, coil design. Every variable I've showed you, the, the four parts of the, of the antenna, can have different specifications to meet your needs. Um, the thing is, this particular antenna works. If you just want to build what I build, it will work. If you want to play with it and come up with something that fits other frequencies you like to work on or other dimensions you have in mind, whatever, uh, you can figure out how to use these websites. Uh, just dink around with them a little bit and you'll see how, they're, how they work. So, that is the No Stick Buddy Stick. And I've had great success with it. I marvel at how well it performs, both send and receive. And I use it almost exclusively now in my summits on the air activations. I hope this video has been helpful to you, and I wish you great success.